Good evening everyone and welcome to the business of property. Um, we have special guest Tony Meredith who I will add to the live. So at the business of property while we're waiting for Tony to come on board is where we talk about all things mindset um, talk about all things property whether it's to do with mindset strategy uh, really all about re um, trying to add value to what you're doing in the property space and come on board Tony. hello how, you how are you yeah good I realize I don't have all you need them. phones you'll need hey, them. Right? I need hmm. I'll need them give me one second. okay chat I'll away. chat away okay Right. Oh well, Tuesday night. Here we go again. Right. I've just uh, I've had a busy day actually today. So uh, finishing touches on my big presentation. I'm heading down to Sydney tomorrow for three days. I've got a big national franchise conference that I'll be presenting at. So looking forward to that. So I've been busy doing a whole lot of uh, last minute preparation for that. Uh, I actually did a live today just talking about the amount of effort that goes on with things behind the scenes and just it's important for people to recognise that there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, whether it be with your sporting stars, whether it be with people who do presentations, etc. that there's a lot of effort that goes on and all we see is the finished result. But, uh, yeah, don't lose sight of all the effort that goes on behind the scenes. So, hello, Cheryl. Just having a little rant to myself, just having a little chat. Um, welcome back. Chatting, chatting to yourself. Let me let me get this thing connected. Give me one You're moment. Right. Charging away. How was your session in Melbourne? Uh, Melbourne was very, Melbourne was very good. Too. Thank you. Yeah, so it was great. Uh, a lot of people I hadn't met before, which was nice to say hello to. I did two sessions actually in Melbourne. So we did the morning <laughs> session, which was the information session with uh, for the property development formula, and the afternoon session was the regular monthly meetup, and I was fortunate enough to present in both sessions two different topics, so one on taking action and the other on how you can ensure that you achieve your goals. So I'm sure that the people who listened to me got plenty of value from it. I certainly enjoyed sharing with them and helping them in uh, various journeys. So it was a lot, a lot of fun. So uh, nothing property related this week. I'm, awesome. I was just saying to the viewers that I'm off to do some other business stuff uh, tomorrow. I'm off to a big franchise conference. I'm pumped. Uh, so I've been, I've got, yeah, I've, got fabulous. I've got four keynotes that I'll be delivering over the next uh, three days, but then the week after I'll be doing some property Fantastic. stuff with Rob again back here in Brisbane and then, uh, and then we'll be heading to Sydney and Melbourne and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and that's for the Sydney event will be the psychology of psychology of property development, property. 24th, the yeah, 24th and 25th of August in Sydney. And then we'll be in Melbourne on the 7th Excellent. and 8th of September. So, the yeah, we're taking the show on the road. We're, we're excited, actually. We haven't been uh, back to Sydney with the psychology event since last June. And we've never done the psychology event yeah. in Melbourne. So if you're in Melbourne and you want a great weekend uh, that's going to change your thoughts and get you moving forward, then come along and say good day to Rob and I. And we will uh, we'll, we'll, we'll break you down to build you back up safely. So it's all about helping people get out of their own way and going awesome. on and achieving, you know, all the goals that they've got for themselves in property development. If you're not in developing, uh, that's okay. We, there's, there's other, you know, there's plenty of other things that you can get out of it. But certainly, if you're a developer, then you sh will get enormous value. Um, you talk about breaking breaking someone down and building them up. It's like a muscle, right? And that's what they do with muscles when they, you know, when you're using the roller and breaking down the muscle tissue so that it loosens up and then it builds up again. That's sort of what I, I look at what you guys do. Oh, um, the Rob and Tony Roadshow, that's, that's what you do. I'm actually speaking with Rob tomorrow um, in a new segment that um, we're releasing on the Property Developer Australia yeah, page, uh, which is to really support bit businesses that are doing awesome mm. things to be able to, to add value to what um, what our developers are Great. doing and, and the property businesses are doing. So Rob's the first first cab off the rank. So Rob, tomorrow, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Okay. Um, note that that is 5 p.m. That is, that is sort of pick up time with the kids. So there will be people running and little people <laughs> screaming, but that's okay. Right. Oh, I'm so, I'm so, I <laughs> I'm won't, used unfortunately, to I won't be able to make it. I'm actually tomorrow. I'll be at that time. I'll be on your bridge. I'll be on. 
You'll be I'll be climbing, climbing the bridge. I'll be I'll be yeah, I'll be on the bridge, the and then I'll be straight after that. I'll be coming down and going on a tour of the Sydney Harbour. So uh, I'm going to be doing it tough for the next few days. Yeah, awesome. look, I I, I shared. Yeah, with, yeah, it sounds it's sounds dreadful. terrible. I shared with people on another live that I do that I have a fear of heights. So I'm really excited about going on the bridge tomorrow. Uh, I know that prior to going on, I'll be absolutely crapping myself. But right about now, I'm feeling pumped. So uh, looking forward to it. Lean into it, I say. I tell everyone else to lean into it. So tomorrow will be yes. an example of me doing exactly that, practicing what I preach. Ex- exactly, because it's it's um, it's 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 all psychological, mm-hmm. right? Hundred percent. So that's going to be good. Hi Daniel. Hi Daniel. How are you doing? Yo yo. Um, awesome. So what are we talking about? I've got about no clue. Today, I've been so. I've, I've got no clue. I believe I, you I, have, have got it. I, have, I haven't even got anything <laughs> prepared, Cheryl. Like I've been that busy today with the stuff that I've got to do for the next three days, and uh, I was just packing the suitcase. We don't have any pictures. No, I've, you know what no, I've, I've got? I've got, I've got, I've got, got what I've got is I've got some blank paper here because I thought you might ask me something. And what I could do is based on what we talk about, I might scribble something up. A la uh, Mr. Squiggle style, but we might scribble something awesome. up. Yes. All right. The the thing I, I believe I want to have, sort of talk about this week, and this is more probably sharing a bit of what I've been I've been working on the last the last week is and, and speaking with um uh, a team that I that I do some mentoring for is around that task and time management. Mm. Um, how to really in 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 your property search and so so for example, um, uh, the the team that I, I I mentor they reached out to me and said you know Cheryl I you know we're we're, we've been trying this strategy for a while and things just aren't aren't really working. We're not really sure if if it if it works, um, you know, we're both so exhausted and we get to the end of the day and it's just like, oh, we've got to switch into property mode and it's just tiring, right? Um, so I sat down with them and, and, and tried to understand where it is that, that they were, were getting stuck. Mm. Um, and I could tell the poor, the, <laughs> the, poor, the poor things were just drained. Mm. You could tell just from their, their sort of demeanor and they were, they're both tired. Mm. You could see it in their mm. eyes. And really, you know, a lot of it we talked about in terms of uh, motivation and mindset. And it does get to that mm. point when you're in property, you know, it doesn't happen like right. this. And it ha- certainly doesn't necessarily mean it'll happen after the 10th one or the 20th or 30th mm. or whichever, mm. but it's the 40th or the 50th. Um, that it gets a bit easier. So we talk, one of one of the main things that we talked about was, and we've we've highlighted um, in previous sessions, is about looking at all the things that you're doing because they both work full time. Mm. And then once they finish, you know, thankfully they're 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 young and single, so they don't have they don't have the extra extra responsibility of children or or, or um, sort of household. But you know they're still busy young professionals and. They say we just don't have time. And I just and I and I said to them, and what we've talked about is break down all your, you know, what you do in a day and all your tasks that you need to do as part of your property mm-hmm. search, and look at where you guys are able to obviously delegate to either, you know, who's responsible mm-hmm. for what, um, and delegate to that mm-hmm. person, or even look at outsourcing, outsourcing to mm-hmm. a VA um, and and it came down as well for, for me to sort of reflect because we often as business owners try to do everything we've, we've talked mm-hmm. about this before is really really write down what it is that we do for each and every segment of my business because I'm I'm looking at a, a, a an employee employing mm-hmm. another VA mm-hmm. at the moment to be able to to release um some of my time to focus on mm-hmm. the business and I wrote it down and I was really clear as to the things that I knew I, I needed mm-hmm. to be a part of, not mm-hmm. negotiable, or at least to begin with, then I could train mm-hmm. up someone else. Um, and then clear on going, okay, these are the, the tasks that I could train someone to be able mm-hmm. to take over. And so I, I, what I want to, to talk about obviously is today, but encouraging everyone in, in their, whatever they're doing, whether it's, it's their property journey, um, it's their mm-hmm. business or whichever, to really drill down. And everyone's busy. I know, I, I, I really know that. And, and today, one thing I started doing was doing a time check 
So there's obviously free time checking systems there. A time check on what I'm spending my time on so that I can more accurately um, work out my time, my effort and my eventual sort of mm. output as to where I focus focus my time and my sure. energy, uh, particularly in, in, in business and, you know, where you're looking at am I spending time on mm. the right mm. sort of mm. thing, it's really helped me sort of focus in and narrow in and going, all right, these are good opportunities here to take, you know, to take on mm. and focus on, particularly when you've got lots of projects or lots of mm. opportunities that, that present mm. themselves. And I'm very much, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll admit I'm very much, ooh, ooh, oh, yes, that looks mm -hmm. good. All right. And then I go, oh, I didn't get mm -hmm. anything done. But now I've been able to sort of pull back and go, all right, these are the tasks that I really, the projects, the top three that I'm just going to be able to focus on and narrow mm -hmm. down on and, and execute. Mm -hmm. So um, tell me from your, your, mm -hmm. your perspective, mm -hmm. And this is the first time I think that you've gone on for about five minutes without I've been, talking I've, to I've, been incredi I've been incredibly patient, Cheryl. <laughs> so let me say a couple of things. Firstly, with the, uh, yeah. and I'll get to the time bit in a minute. Firstly, with a couple that you mentioned, how you get to the end of the day and don't feel like it. The first thing I would say to everybody is you need to think greater than you feel. So what I mean by that is you're not always going to feel like doing the things that you know you should be doing because you've had a busy day, you're exhausted at the end of the day, uh, and we don't. And whether it be in property, whether it be in health and wellness, you don't always feel feel like doing the stuff that you know you need to be doing. And it's a difference between doing the things that are right versus doing the things that are easy. The easy thing is to sit back on the couch, have a glass of vino and relax. The right thing to do is doing the tasks that take me closer to where I want to get to. So that's the first thing that I would say. The second thing is work out what's the critical path. So again, you've got your goal. I'm assuming we've gone through the goals, the whys, the what's, all those sorts of things. So I don't want to keep going and reiterating that. You need to work out what's my critical path and what's the difference between me being busy versus me being productive because there's plenty of things that I can do that are busy that I'm not necessarily being productive. I'll give you a good example. Trawling through realestate.com, mm. looking for property in the main is being busy, not productive. Right. So, there, yes, there could be opportunities on mm -hmm. realestate.com, but the percentages are lower, particularly from a developing point of view, on realestate.com versus doing other things to proactively try to find a property. So if I look at realestate.com, I see that as a reactive strategy. doesn't mean there's not an opportunity out there. There's plenty of developers who've got things from realestate.com. So I don't want people to misinterpret what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is that in this game to be successful, you want to take a proactive strategy towards securing the particular property that you're looking for. What's a proactive strategy look like? Well, there's a couple of main ones. One is you can leverage the time with the agents, build relationships with them. We talked about this uh, a few weeks ago. And the mm. other is to get into uh, letters, doing direct letters uh, to vendors, perhaps if you're brave enough, knocking on doors, so on and so forth. Um, you know, using buyers, agents, there's a whole range of ways. But, uh, you know, I would work out what's my critical part. The key to all this, and you touched on it, is you need to have a plan. So it's the old saying of if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And so if you can't go and write a plan mm -hmm. down, then uh, at least that way you've got something to, uh, to work towards. The other great thing that I like, Cheryl, which you touched on, is to analyse where are you actually spending your time. So that's your own measurement on am I being busy or am I being productive? And you might do it, so you, you talked about some free apps that you can do. Uh, I just use spreadsheets and I've got it in 15-minute uh, increments. Uh, either way, it's the same, same, but different. But effectively what it is doing is it's just recording, am I challenging myself? So one of the things that I challenge myself on is am I spending some time uh, on, on strategy, right? So there's plenty of things that I do that are mm. urgent, uh, low-level tasks, but there's a difference between urgent tasks and important tasks. And important tasks to me are strategy, uh, driving my business forward. Uh, how do I go and get more um, customers, more clients, etc.? So from a property standpoint, strategically being what are the other things that I can do to acquire that property? Again, depends on what phase in your property development journey you are, but really challenge yourself on is this task that I'm doing urgent? And there's plenty of things that are urgent, but also could it be uh, what percentage of my time am I spending actually being strategic and thinking about the business and then go back to what is it that you and I have started here with this Tuesday live. It's the business of property, right? And so it's about starting to create a business for ourselves. 
Yeah, Sean. Sean Hayes. G'day, g'day, Sean. He says he loves sending yeah. the letters. It's worked really well for Sean. I think Sean's secured about. I don't know how many how many option deals do you have going, Sean? But I reckon he's optioned about twenty, thirty mm. plus um, uh, deals just by sending sending letters. You must be sending some incredible things with your letters, Sean. You got. <laughs> um, so that that like I said, good good example there, and and it's just popped up to me as well. Even um, always, and 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 what I I mentioned to to the couple was um, think outside the box. Definitely, always think outside the box and do things that are a bit different to everyone everyone else. You know, um, uh, you might even look at um, obviously, like I said, leveraging leveraging the real estate mm -hmm. agent. <laughs> Sean sends chocolates. Uh, definitely, <laughs> I, I, I'd be on to that too. Um, you know, get to know the mm. agent, educate them as well. But even, you know, one thing that, that popped up was, you know, maybe offer to do some workshops with um, with the agent and the, the, the property property management mm. team. So it educates them as to what, what mm. you're doing. Say, for example, if it's HMOs or whatever mm. it might be, so that they're, they're going to be, because they're going to be the cheerleaders for you to get through to the vendors, uh, sorry, the landlords, right? Because unless the agent's on board, you're not going to be able to get to the landlord. Mm. And so if they sort of think that you're in the too hard basket, they're not going to even want to get to the landlord. So I'm always very mindful that agents are my best friends. Oh, 100%. And, and in fact... <laughs> if I want to secure... Yeah, and in fact, uh, don't, don't mm. assume ahead. that agents understand the process involved in developing because the majority of agents don't. Uh, there mm. are some good ones out there. Uh, but uh, the majority of agents don't. And so as developers, we need to educate the agents. We need to justify why an agent believes the price is worth a million bucks and our offer is at 850. And we need to take them through some of those top line costs to help educate them on their journey. So uh, that's just as critical. Please don't assume that agents uh, know what they're talking about when it comes to developing, because in my experience, a lot of them don't. Yeah, no, and 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 that's right. Uh, and we we talked about this before mm. as to why it, it's one reason that we shouldn't be um, afraid to speak up with you know speak with with agents. Hey, Luke, Luke Berry. Oh, I'd love love to to introduce Luke into to the um the group one day. Luke Berry is from Third Eye Group, which I used to um to mm. work with, and I've known for a very very mm. long time. Um, Luke. Which award did you did that I win yesterday? I think it's the UDIA award for um, the best sort of um, key restoration project that they've done um, in Waterloo. So for any developers there who are looking mm. at um, ways to be able to market their properties, uh, market their their projects, um, do things that are innovative, um, really stand out. And I said, you know, really think outside mm. the box. Um, Luke Berry and his team at Third Eye Group are pretty much the, the key, mm. key and number number one people in the space that are doing some amazing right. things. And this is why um, I know what I love about being able to be part of a mm. community is to also see the cool stuff that people are mm. doing um, and and support businesses mm. that are that are really cool. helping um, the people in this in this group to grow, whether it's it's yourself, yourself doing, you know, the, the coaching, whether it's, you know, Rob's team doing mentoring along mm. with you. Um, and I'd like to be able, obviously, speak to other developers, you know. Oh, I think it's exciting. I think it's an opportunity. Yeah, I think cool, it's exciting cool to showcase stuff. all the one. Yeah, the wonderful people. And it's all about, uh, uh, you know, bringing on different viewpoints, bringing on people with different experiences. There's plenty of people on this community that are far more experienced than me in the developing space. So it'd be great to hear from them uh, on occasion. So it sounds like Wednesday evening, uh, 5 p.m. is going to be the time for that. So I'd encourage everyone to, to tune into that. Uh, now, Cheryl, let's get back to the topic. So, um, act, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So, so that's, focusing, that's, focusing on, on, yeah, focus is part of time management. It is, Cheryl. I'm saying hi to people. Oh, good. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's fine. Um, I'll let you go for a moment, but uh, now it's back. 
<laughs> bring it back. This is why. That's why you're the you're that's the coach it. here. Um. So, like I said we we're talking about sort of proactive strategies. Mm. Um. Um. Time management, task task management as well, and and ways to evaluate opportunities or your projects and the projects that you should be spending time on. Tell me what are what are good effective ways that you've found or with your clients for them to be able to assess um, uh, the things that they're doing. You know, if they've got different opportunities or whether it's, you know, business mm-hmm. opportunities, how do you help them assess how to spend the right yep. amount of time on, on, Simpli- on different Simplistically, things? is it taking you closer to your goal or further away? And I know that can, seems quite simple, but we all have yeah. a goal that's down down the road a bit. And these next things that we do, is it going to take me closer to my goal or further away? Is this going to be the most efficient uh, route to uh, to where I want to get to or not? We need to really challenge ourselves mm-hmm. on what we're doing. And it comes back to the whole, you know, busy, busy versus productive piece. There's plenty of people who are being busy think that they're busy doing stuff, sure. but they're not doing stuff. That stuff's not necessarily taking them as efficiently closer towards uh, towards where they want to get to. The other thing I want to talk about is you talked about task management. What I do and what I encourage people to do is block out time in your calendar to do certain tasks. So rather than trying to multi-skill and have phones going and have email, you know, little um, dings going every time an email comes off, firstly, shut down the email ding. And what I do is I also put my phone on silent. If I've got a period of time when, say, an hour block, and I need to be focused on a particular task, then I shut it all down. And I just focus on that particular task for that hour block. And though I'm finished the hour block, then I can always turn my phone back on. I promise you that um, nothing is that um, urgent or severe. The sky is still um, up, it's still blue. Uh, you know, it's uh, nothing is, uh, you know, can't be can't be resolved in an hour's time. But a lot of people have this fear around, oh, my goodness, I couldn't possibly turn my phone off or I couldn't possibly, you know, shut my email off for that amount of time. Uh, I'm going to suggest if that's where you're at, then you really need to think long and hard about uh, about what you're doing because you need to give yourself the bandwidth to be able to focus on particular tasks distraction-free. Right, because uh, then we start to have all these things. We we get an email coming in, and we we go over there, and you touched on before, but you go over here and over there and over here, and and what happens is you never actually move forward. So you know you've got all these um, these other uh, distractions. Uh, you know I call it shiny objectitis. Uh, you know where um, there's different things that come into your vision, but you have to be sometimes you know have tunnel vision to go for this next hour. I'm doing this. You know, or it might be that for this next hour, I'm calling agents. I mean, it depends on what it is that you want to do. But if it means that I've got to call agents for uh, to start to build relationships across properties, then do that. Now, you can always then at the end of the hour, do something totally different. Answer your emails. You know, I'd encourage you to look at your email, say, three times a day. That might be morning, lunch and, and afternoon. So then you're not constantly looking at emails because when you're constantly looking at emails, what are you doing? You're doing the er- doing the important thing things and if you're constantly doing the urgent things then all you're doing is maintaining but when you do the important things and you start to take um, leaps and strides moving forwards does that make sense yeah 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 definitely so one of the things that i i noticed with a lot of um say new developers or just developers in mm-hmm. general is that um it's that ability to to determine which of the strategies or the types of projects they should be spending spending mm-hmm. time on so that when i talk about strategies they might come across oh do i do vendor finance or do i do um uh, op- an option deal or do i do a duplex or whichever how would you guide your a client through that sure. process of being able to help them narrow down which which strategy well there's a couple well, there's, there's two them. types of strategies that you mentioned there so one is acquisition strategies and one is development strategies so a duplex strategy is a development strategy uh you know options vendor finance etc is an acquisition strategy does that make sense and so they're very different pieces there one is to acquire the property or get control of the property the others actually do the work itself um what we do early on uh for students is pick one pick one pick one that resonates with you because here's the thing all strategies work. 
Now, not all strategies work in all suburbs and not all strategies work in all suburbs at all times, right? So markets go through cycles, but all strategies will work. So if you have an affinity towards townhouses, well, then if that's your strategy, then you need to seek out where you can go and do townhouses. If you have an affinity towards duplexes, well, then if that's your strategy, go and work out uh, that. For new people starting out, I would encourage you to do as simple a project as you possibly can to just start to get some momentum. Mm -hmm. It's all about putting the left foot in front of the right, but pick one. Because it's, and, and this is where then you need to train your agents because what will happen is uh, you pick one strategy, but they'll say, oh, hang on a second, Tony, I know you're doing duplexes, but, hey, we've got this wonderful townhouse site over here or we've got this wonderful land subdivision over there. And all of a sudden your focus is going over here and over there and over here and up here and uh, it's not moving forward. You have to put the blinkers on and be disciplined to go, I'm doing one strategy. Thank you. Uh, you know, there might be someone within your network that you could flick that onto who perhaps is doing a townhouse strategy if you're just doing, say, you know, a simple uh, duplex or whatever it might be. But uh, I would encourage you to stay focused on one. So one strategy, uh, one council, three suburbs is what we focus on with our students. Yeah, okay. Um, I almost, while you're saying that, I almost have this idea of, of possibly like a matrix of, of different strategies where you have, you know, um, you know, time, money, skill, where you sort of have you know, a few options for people to go, all right, if I've got time or if I've got money or if I've got the skill, hmm. what are the strategies hmm. that might suit me best for um, hmm. that, that sort of tee up with, with my my relevant, you know, time or money or skill, I'm, I'm, you know. I, the, the, re the reason sort of I'm smiling, an yeah, 100%. I, I, wish, I wish you'd doodled something. Why? No, that, that, that's okay. <laughs> the reason why I'm smiling is because uh, that's what Rob goes through, right? So Rob has that very slide that you're referring to. Uh, he, take, he, right, take, okay. he takes people through that. In fact, uh, he'll be doing it at the psychology weekend in Sydney. Um, so it's not just all around yes, the psych psychology. Course, yes. There's going to be some stuff on the developing side and helping people get clear on what's their strategy. In fact, our objective is to have people walk away from the two days with a clearer pathway for the next five years. So um, part of that will be the determination of strategy of which Rob will take people through that matrix. So he's got it. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Fabulous. Mm. There, you, there you go, Rob. I haven't been sneaking in to have a look at what you do, Rob. So <laughs> Oh, but you come, you're, coming along, you, 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 you're coming along uh, in a few weeks, right? So, uh, I yeah, am. so you'll be able to see it. I am, you'll be able and to I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do a review. I won't do the, the sneaky video, but I'm uh, definitely, and I appreciate, appreciate the invitation. So, so back onto it. So that's how we, um, if anyone's keen to, to work out what sort of strategy might suit them based on their, you know, time availabilities, Time availability, serviceability, money, knowledge, and risk mm. appetite. Obviously, check out the two-day, you know, mm. psychology of PPD course, mm. psychology of property development course um, that's running running mm. in Sydney. Um, excellent. I'm going to just so take all, a little break and see if there's any sort of questions of that I've missed yeah, so please. far. So also, I was just saying, Cheryl, also from a capability point of view as well. So again, if you're early on in your journey, then perhaps for you, it might be a case of uh, Jay being with someone, being a money partner. Perhaps you've got, you're still in your day job. Perhaps you've got a little bit of cash and some serviceability. So you know, there's ways that you can get into developing and piggyback or shadow of people who are more experienced and you can start to work out whether that resonates with you or not. The other thing is get along to network meetings and you know, I'm not here to, to, to plug all the events, but just you know, speak to people, ask people, talk to the people who are doing townhouses, ask them what it is that they like doing about townhouses, ask them what it is that they don't like about townhouses. Have a chat to people about land subdivisions. Uh, do the same. Like, you know, to me, it's all around, uh, I call it, it's like a, a buffet. And it's about tasting all the different strategies. And when I say tasting, I don't mean go and buy all the different things. I mean, just find people who are doing these. Uh, what I find in, in all the communities is that people are so giving of their time. So if you are new into property development, you need to just stick your hand up and ask the question. 
People aren't going to come running to you. You need to take a proactive approach. But there's plenty of people who are on this uh, particular Facebook group. And if you reached out and said, hey, I'd love to have a chat to someone around townhouse developments and to see if that's right for me, I reckon there'd be an enormous number of people who would be there only too happy to help. Or someone says, I want to get into land subdivisions or at least understand it. Do the same. Um, ask and you shall receive. Yes. No, I, I, I often encourage everyone. I, I get, um, as you can imagine, quite a few private sort of PMs um, on my messenger. Uh, they're all clean, although I've had one that wasn't. Um, <laughs> that's another story. Um, but and, and, and often they are asking about, you know, you know, Cheryl, um, I've got this project. Um, uh, is it something that you can help with? And I, and I encouraged him. I said, you know, um, sure, but why don't you ask? Because there's a whole lot of people on this, on, in this community that have a whole range of, um, of expertise and that can help you navigate your journey a lot better. And that's the other part about time management and also task management is ensuring, um, ensuring that you are able to leverage where you can. Absolutely. Um, so I know, I uh, understand that where a lot of people are possibly, you know, looking at, at going into property development full time or already there, it is always about being smart about your time. 100%. And doing as much within that time. Oh, 100%. It's about how can I be as efficient as and effective as I possibly can be. And you need to constantly challenge yourself on that. We all have the same amount of time. We all have 168 hours in any given week. It's just that the successful people learn how to leverage that time. They learn how to be as efficient as they possibly can be versus those that are really struggling. For those of you who are in a day job and want to get out of your day job, uh, it is possible. I have done it. There are plenty of others who've been able to make the transition. So I know that it's a lot to do uh, a day job and a side hustle, but it comes back to what is it that you want? Why do you want it? How badly do you want it? And if you want to make it happen, then you will make it happen. So... You know, you're not going to be the first person who tries to transition out of a day job into property development on a full-time basis, nor will you be the last. So it's about going right, thinking greater than I feel. I don't feel like it tonight, but I know that if I don't do it tonight, then I push my goal of, of getting out of my day job, I push it out another day, another day. It's another day further out. And if you're comfortable with that, well, that's on you. But for me, uh, that wasn't the case. And uh, it was all around going, what more can I do? And I did mine at the start of the day. So I was up at 4 a.m. every day. And that's how I squeezed it in. I got two hours between four and six before my family wake, woke up. And that worked uh, well for me. And so you've got to yeah. find, you know, what works for you. If you're a night person, that's awesome. If you're a morning person, that's awesome. It doesn't really matter. What you need to do is just find the time. We say to people in the program that you're going to need on average around 15 hours a week to be able to, to be able to do it, do it, do this justice, do it justice to then get some success and then transition out of your day job. So when you say, "Well, oh, 15 hours, that's a lot," mm -hmm. but when you break it down, it's actually uh, not that much. I, have I have I drawn the time uh, circle for you guys previously? Time pie. Time pie, yeah, yeah yes. time, yes, time yes, pie, yes, yeah, have. correct. So, so yes. the time, you know, the time pie is, uh, you know, forty hours a week uh, work, uh, fifty six hours of sleep. That's eight hours a night times seven. Uh, it's uh, six hours of stuff a day. So miscellaneous. That's forty two, uh, and then that will leave you with. Uh, I think you'll find it'll leave you with about thirty hours a week. Uh, and so if you work more in your job, uh, that's fine. If you do more stuff for uh, miscellaneous, that's fine. But I think that you will have about 15 hours in your week. It comes down to then what are you doing with the 15 hours? So there's two things, quantity yeah. and quality. Quantity, can I create the time? And the answer is yes, you can when you, when you look hard enough. And then quality, being with that time, what is it that I'm doing? How am I maximising the time that I have? Because, again, if I don't have a lot of time and I'm desperate to change my circumstances, then I need to squeeze every last little bit of juice uh, out of the time that I have available. Yeah, and I, I, I do encourage um, people to either, like you said, I... I you know, write down and, and take note of the tasks that you're doing as well in your day. You know, if, if you want to be able to do this for a week mm. to be able to, to, to understand where you're spending your mm. time. And I find as well being tracking it actually almost forces you to 
um, to not be distracted because you're going, actually, I'm being accountable. I've got to write this down. So I can't spend half an hour scroll, scrolling through f- Facebook or whatever it is, unless it's on a Tuesday night. Um, well, that, absolutely. Myself. Uh, that, that, that's, that's, a, that's a mandatory. Um, but, you know, something like I said, using an app to be able to say, all right, I had this much time for, for lunch. I did, did, you know, an hour of travel. But during that hour of travel, I was listening to a, a podcast. I was doing some meditation or whatever it might mm. be. Um, I find that a really effective way. Then, then you can see how much free time that you actually have and where. What are you scrolling? I'm about to, uh, well, show me. I'm, I'm about, um, I'm about, so I'm about, clock, of, clock no, of no, no, no. I'm about, I'm about to show something. So um, no, I haven't the the, the clock pie. Uh, I'm not doing that because I've shown that before. I can do that now if you want me to. Um, if for people to vi- to no, people no, to want, visualize I want, it. I want to see something new. Well, I'll, give, I'll give you something new. So the other thing that I want to talk about is prioritizing our time. So you're going to look at that and go, oh my god, what what the hell has he done? Um, so let me just describe this. So this mm, here, it's like popcorn. this here is a jar, and we have uh, this is called personal priority. Right. So personal priority for me is there's three key areas in your life. The big rocks are you. The uh, smaller rocks, so these ones here, you'd say they're sort of pebbles. Uh, they are your inner circle. And then down here, this here is sand, and that is them. Right. So I call it um, you or me. Um, us, us okay. being my inner circle, and then them being those outside of my inner circle. Now, here's how people spend their time primarily. Um, they put in the them first, the sand. So what is the them? The them is their job. The them is uh, distant, uh, uh, you know, friends of friends. The, the them goes in first. Then what happens is we put in then the pebbles, and the pebbles are the inner circle. And then we've got the big rocks, which is us. And because we put them in last, they actually spill outside of the jar. Can you see that? I know, I know that's a, it's a, a bit of a Mr. Squiggle drawing, but uh, right. So the, the what you need to be doing is you need to be doing this, and that is to, in your jar, putting your big rocks in first. So from a time management point of view, putting in chunks into your calendar of when, if you're in a day job and you want to transition, put in there an hour here, an hour there, and at whatever it is, and put that into your calendar first. That's your time that you need to dedicate to focusing on your property journey. So you put the big rock in the jar first. Then what you do is then you put in your pebbles. So your pebbles is then uh, the time with your inner circle. Okay, so that's uh, the inner circle. And then what's last is the sand, which is the them. Does that make sense? And look, all of a sudden, it actually fits into the jar, whereas up here, you've got the rocks uh, spilling over the edge. And so, you know, you can apply that same methodology in so many ways. For example, um, another thing that I do from a personal priority point of view, not just around time, but around um, health and wellness. So that is a big rock for me is my mindset. So every morning I've got my daily routine. I've got that in my calendar, but also then my exercise. So they're my big rocks. Okay, then I put in the, 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 the us, so that is time with the family and around there. And to be fair, probably not enough time uh, with my family. Uh, but then but, but the, you put the us in and then the them sprinkles uh, through and it, and it fits in uh, to, uh, to my jar. Now, the reality is that I, I do need to spend more time with my family and I'm conscious of, of that piece. But from a, from a theory point of view, the idea is to put yourself first. Why? because you want to fill your own cup up first. And when you fill your own cup up first, you can give so much more to other people. But sadly, a lot of people look at it as being selfish. I would say that you're actually being selfish by putting yourself last. You need to put yourself first, and, and that is mm. to look after your own um, health and well-being. And if you're on a property journey, you want to allocate time for your property journey in your calendar as a priority. Otherwise, you put it last, and guess what happens? It's not going to happen. It just won't happen. And you'll be in the same job that you hate in six months and 12 months' time, and you'll be whinging and whining about the same stuff, and nothing will have changed. And so for to have a different outcome, yeah. you need to do things differently. Or get a bigger cup. Or get a bigger cup. <laughs> Tony's going, no. <laughs> or, or, look. What is it? What? <laughs> Tony's going. I'm just going. To... What is going? <laughs> what, what, what is going on? Oh, 
it's like it's like what I go back to Arnie, right? He he says, you know, or sleep or just sleep faster. Well, and you know, yeah, and, and he, but he one of the things about not needing as much. Yeah, sleep. And, and look, but but here's the thing, right? So one of my new clients is actually in the um, uh, health and wellness space, and they do a lot with the drug and alcohol testing, but they're also doing a lot around fatigue. And interestingly, that if you are awake, if you're yeah. awake for 18 hours, that's the equivalent of 0.06. So in fact, you are over the limit technically, if you are awake for 18 hours, which is a fascinating stuff. And the deeper I get in with this client and the more that I'm uncovering. My point is not around the amount of sleep because we need sleep, right? Sleep, in my view, and, and again, the more that I'm um, understanding, is going to be a future epidemic. All these people who feel it's a badge of honour to not do a lot of uh, sleep, not have a lot of sleep, I believe it's going to catch up with us down the mm. track. There's all sorts of studies coming out around the, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the issues around lack of sleep. That's not the problem. The problem is the awake time, right? So the problem is, and on my pie chart, right? So if you go to my pie chart, right? On my pie chart, I actually talk about um, having 56 hours, uh, 56 hours for, for sleep, right? So that is uh, seven nights, uh, eight hours a night. I encourage you, have, have that amount of time, right? Because it's important to have, uh, it's important to have that amount of sleep, but... Um, it's not the sleep time that's the problem, it's the awake time. So here's my pie chart, 40 hours of work, 56 hours of sleep, 42 hours of stuff. That's seven days, it's six hours a day of stuff. It could be travel, food, family, whatever, uh, and that leaves you 30 hours left mm. if you're going to tally that up to 168. So it's not the sleep that's the – you need sleep. You need sleep, and in fact, uh, um, you know, um, I was listening to one of my clients the other day do a Facebook Live on being exhausted and being sick. You know who we're talking about, and uh, you know that person needs to needs to rest, right? We need to rest. It's the awake time. It's the awake time. Are you being as effective as and efficient as you can be when you're awake? Yeah, there's um, that's a really interesting and and you know a. I think this the sleep part it it is a, a critical point uh, about also the time management because you know I've read certain things about whether you can have little sleep and then have a have a have a nana nap in the afternoon as your sort of uh, a spark I know I know Rob Rob has has quite short bursts of sleep and then he has a, I know he's he's mentioned before just a a bit of a a, a shut eye to be able to pick yourself up and I've heard this a few times and uh, um from different different people um about sleep sleep hacking um uh, and often I I think how do I get more into my day and is it about squeezing the less time into my sleep which you know by force of nature I have children that wake me up anyhow even if I wanted to have a sleep in I don't but I I do tend to work you know um um sort of almost mm. in shifts so you know, I'll be interested to hear what the the science is around that that sleep, and I know there's there's quite a few, quite a few sort of debates around that as well. But um, as I said, the the main thing is that what we're doing in our awake mm. time and how we're we're prioritizing and spending that time and, and leveraging it to our our best of our Correct. ability. Yeah, hundred really. percent, absolutely. So yeah, look, I don't I don't know the yeah. answer on you know little micro sleeps and whatnot. And uh, you know, as I get deeper in, I'll, there's certainly some of the questions that I'll ask. But um, listen to your body, right? Listen to your body. If you're someone who is able to get by on six hours sleep and, and, and actually function on six hours, well, good good luck to you. If you need eight or nine, whatever. That that's that's not that's not the issue. I don't believe that that is the issue. I believe the yeah. issue is that it's when we're awake. It's when we're awake and we're watching telly, yeah. we're scrolling social media, uh, we're procrastinating, uh, we're just fluffing around doing stuff. That's the issue. Uh, it's not the sleep. Yeah, I like to share, and I, I'm 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 doing this tracking, like I said, for this week to be able to see where I'm spending my time more, and so my you know the projects that I'm that I'm dealing with in, in my in my own yeah. business and and sort of the mm. task and, and really seeing which ones I'm spending time on that are, are, are returning a, 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 an yeah, outcome yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and has the highest mm. yield. Um, and, and also then the ones where I'm, you know, I've, I've taken on things which aren't necessarily 
providing a providing a, a, a great sort of yield. And and it's also as I said, depending on what your business needs are and what you're short in. Say for example, and I've learned this from a, a um, another business coach is about um, you know looking at where if it's cash flow that you're mm. short in then obviously focus on the things that are bringing mm. in cash flow and and if it's time that you're short in then don't focus on the things that are taking up that require a lot mm. of your time like that, that mm. makes sense but then sometimes we were so sort of confronted with the the number of things that we're juggling around in the air that it's difficult for us to work out which are the th- which are the things that we need to be um, prioritizing um, in well, our just, time. And I sure. Well, we did. Break yeah, and then that, that then that's that's such a um, it's such a general statement, right? Because without getting the specifics of people's circumstances, mm-hmm. it's difficult to say one or the other. But my point to all that is, if you're feeling mm-hmm. overwhelmed, just pick one. The worst thing that people do, and I see this all the time, Cheryl, is people get overwhelmed with everything, and what do they do? It all becomes too hard and they do nothing, right? So, mm-hmm. so if you're going to go and get mm-hmm. they get, um, uh, you know, paralysis. If you're feeling overwhelmed, mm-hmm. this is where I love to write stuff down, right? Takes Because the overwhelm is that I've got all these things swimming around in my head and I can't see clearly. I'll, I'll, I'll bet you that if you start to write down all the things that are going on in your head and you write them down in front of you and you can actually visualise it, you'll be able to work out which ones, uh, you know, which ones you need to prioritise over others. Again, is it going to take me closer to my goal or further away? But then, uh, you know, so once, once you've got it um, down there on the page, just pick one. Just pick one. You know, just do one thing at a time, one thing at a time. If you just do things simply, right, this is all about getting people to get momentum. The worst thing you can do is go, oh, my goodness, I can't possibly decide. I've got too much stuff going on and decide nothing. You, that's not taking you closer to your goal, that's actually taking you further away from your goal. Right, so write things down, see them, pick one, go with it. Um, to your point, you can start to then do some analysis on the return on effort, is this what I need, is this my critical path, does it take me closer to where I wanna to get to? All those types of things, but um, yeah, if you're feeling overwhelmed, you just need to break it all down. Yeah, and it's the same with, with sort of the property strategy that 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 you undertake, mm. and and even with becoming a suburb expert, mm. right? Um, and this is when I talk about projects or tasks, mm. whatever that might be, opportunities. It's about saying, all right, if I'm I'm going to be focusing on a particular project. So, if, so for example, um, when when we were speaking, when I was speaking to to the couple that I mentor, mm. uh, and they had ten ten different suburbs. I said, well, let's, let's bring it down so that you can just be an expert in... That's massive. It's too many. You know, two are they just three. starting out? Yeah, it's, it, it, they, they are. They are. Um, too many. You know, and that's why they're sort of a bit burnt out because they're looking at a whole lot of different mm-hmm. things and they're trying mm-hmm. to think of different strategies for, mm-hmm. for whichever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, it's, I mean, it's, it's great. What, what I really encourage is that there is someone that you can talk to. Like when you're feeling at that moment of overwhelm and... And, and that you're, you're like, you know, you're stuck. That's when you just really need to reach out to someone who can look outside mm. in to be able to, to help you sort of work through sort of the, the mud. You know, I, I, I say, you know, where, where can I help you get out? Oh, of course, stuck? because it's not your problem, um, right? But, so it's not your problem. Yeah. And so it's like they're stuck mm. on the inside of the jar. And when you're on the inside of the jar, mm. you can't see the writing on the outside. And so you as the coach, the mentor, whatever, and, and obviously I get to experience this as a coach, I can read the writing on the outside of the jar, but the person who's in the middle can't see it. And uh, same with, with your problems, same with my problems. When you're in the middle of your problems, uh, quite often you can't see uh, what's going on because you're stuck in the middle of the jar. It takes someone else uh, to come and say, hey, Cheryl, or the same with me. You know, I quite often uh, can't see the wood for the trees for certain things that are going on, but then you have someone come in and help you. But, you know, go back to the couple you're talking about, uh, one strategy, one suburb, uh, sorry, one council, uh, three suburbs. And, and the reason why I say one council is yes. because each council has their own uh, set of rules, set of town plans, etc. And so, again, when mm-hmm. you're starting mm-hmm. out, how do I make this? Ask yourself, how do I make this as simple as I possibly can? 
right? And so it's about just narrowing down my focus. When I narrow down my focus, I start to feel like I'm getting momentum. When I start to feel like I'm getting momentum, I start to put more effort in and I get even more momentum and more momentum. And before you know it, then we're really, it's like the, um, it's like those snowballs, right? Those snowballs start off about that big and they start to roll yeah. down the mountain and they get bigger, yeah. and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then these huge things that are just out of control. That's where we want to get to, yes. whether it be in property development, in business, in whatever it is, we want to get people to recognise that you want to narrow your focus to help you move uh, forward. Here's the other thing too. When you narrow your focus, right, and when you've got a, a tight thing to look at, there's this thing that we have in, in the base of our brain called the reticular activating system or RAS. I'm not sure if you're aware of that or not. Um, but for the viewers watching at home, what the RAS does mm -hmm. is we can't possibly uh, compute all of the different data points that are in our life. And so the RAS acts as a filter. And so where I'm going with this is if you've got a really narrow tight focus, then all of a sudden you're looking for those particular things and you're going to find them everywhere. Does that make sense? Because you're saying to your brain, this is what I'm looking for and it's going to appear a whole lot easier than it once was, but it was always there. It's just you weren't necessarily looking for it because you were looking for a gazillion and one thing. A great example of how mm. you understand mm. this is, for example, the car that you drive, right? So you might drive a Holden car and then all of a sudden you're seeing Holden cars everywhere. The reality is there are always Holden cars there but it's just that prior to owning a Holden car, you weren't aware of it. So the same again, narrow your focus down. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, and, uh, and then you will see it uh, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. I am going to open the floor up to, to some oh, questions because I've noticed that we've got 10 minutes, 10 minutes. To I know. Nine. I've, I've got an early start. Uh, I'm coming down your way tomorrow. So I've got an early start in the morning. You are. Are you? Are you on the red eye? Red eye. I'm on an early, early, early one into Sydney. Yep. Excellent. Um, Cornelia Cito, hello. How are you? I hope the children are asleep. Um, Rob, you'll be converted once you get there, Cheryl. I'm, I'm sure I will. I'll be absolutely charmed. Um, Cameron, sorry, Cameron is watching. Cameron said, "Looking forward to participating in the weekend again." Awesome. Um, Sue Chong, I'm not sure if you're still watching. Sue um, has uh, rebranded under Ray White around the area. So Sue Chong is is a gunner of a, a real good, estate good. agent. Um, it, this, these are sort of, you know, it's building that, that, that relationship that you have with real estate agents. And I strongly advise um, that you have them on your side when you're, when you're looking for opportunities. Mm -hmm. And like I said, helping them understand yep. what it is what it is that you're doing. Um, uh, excellent, excellent. Daniel, Pat, how are you doing? And um, Luke, oh, where are the questions today? Are what there is, none? What is it today? Tuesday. Are there no questions? There are none. Okay. Well, that means we must have done, we, we must have done an excellent job in explaining. Do we get, do we get, do we get an early month? I have to say, um, uh, last week's, last week's live, um, and thankfully, we talked about taking action. Um, and I'd like to say that we got quite a good bit of feedback about it actually giving people the motivation to actually take action in cool. areas that um, cool. that they were either procrastinating on or were a bit hesitant right. about. So I'm glad that that you know that was was able to bring some value uh, to the community good. there. So. Thank you very much for that, Tony. Well, it's, um, it's a team, so team what, effort, what by I, the way. So uh, it's uh, you and I combined. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, I'd like to encourage uh, everyone that's that's watching as well and that's tuning in to please give us your thoughts as to the type of topics that you want us to discuss. Uh, talk about whether it's about, um, you know, the things that are happening in property, whether it's finance, putting deals together, negotiating, the mindset sort of things, areas where you feel that you're stuck and you could use some, you know, help, help in, in trying to navigate that. Like I said, you know, we're here, you've got a, you've got a resource here that can give you some feedback on that and be able to help you through, through your journey, big, small, curvy, otherwise, um, if we don't know the answers, I'm sure we'll know someone that, that does. So, mm. Ooh, Dion, 
Will you have a replay? Came in late. Yes, Dion, you can watch this live. Um, this is forever. So once it finishes, this is, this, it goes on to... This is forever. Yeah, it stays on forever, forever, forever in Facebook world. So you can watch it That's as it. many times as you like. Yeah, play, um, in fact, please, please whenever, do. Share, whenever you like. Share it with your friends or whatever it is. Uh, like, comment, share, whatever they say. So that's great. Yeah, hopefully you can yeah. get plenty of value out yeah. of it, Dion. And Dion, you can still ask questions as well and we'll yes. be able to respond um, anytime. Awesome, awesome. So, Tony, you head off to Sydney tomorrow for how many days? Uh, three days, coming home Friday night. So, uh, yeah, big uh, national uh, conference, the biggest customer that I've got or client that I've got, and down there helping yeah. them with that big national yeah. conference, big uh, franchise conference. But tomorrow I'm going to be on the bridge. So anyone who's going to be in the bridge uh, in that area around uh, 3.34 tomorrow afternoon, I'll be up the top. I'll be waving to you. I'll be packing it, I'm sure, uh, because I have a fear of heights. But this is about uh, me uh, leaning into it. So <laughs> No, you don't. No, you don't. Where is the positive, positive words, Tony? I love heights. I love. Oh, I'm excited. The, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, no, and I say to people, I'm, I'm excited. excited. <laughs> this, is, this is the thing, right? With fear. So fear. I don't know if I've shared this here on this channel, but fear yeah. has the same physiological characteristics as excitement, right? So you think about the fear. You think about yeah. the shortness of breath. You think about the elevated heart rate. You think about you get a little bit sweaty. So uh, fear is the same as excitement. So I'm just saying to myself. I'm excited. I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. I'm excited. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm excited. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. I see the sweat dripping down the side. We want photo evidence. <laughs> we want photo evidence. I don't know if you – are you able to do a live before you get do, to the I'll bridge? Do, I'll do a live, bridge, but no, I can't sure. do it on the bridge. So, so uh, I'll check that out. Unfortunately, I can't. Yeah. There'll be a live beforehand, uh, and there'll be a live afterwards. So uh, yeah. look out for that. Uh, on my page, so Tony Meredith Coaching. Look out for that tomorrow afternoon. I'll be in Sydney, and I'll be then, uh, yeah, out on the, the water tomorrow evening and doing all sorts of, you know, wonderful things over the next few days. I am working as well, so I've got uh, to, uh, you know, deliver some keynote speeches mm -hmm. and be the MC. so it's not all bridge climbs yeah. and, and yeah. you know, swanning around on boats, but um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And whining, whining well, and dining. Well, certainly dining. So Fabulous. Dining, so and... I'm, not a, I'm not a whiner, but I'm, but I'm uh, um, but certainly plenty of dining. Excellent, excellent. Well, enjoy yourself in, you. in Sydney. We look forward to the, the videos, mm, Tony. Yeah. Uh, for anyone else, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, 5 p.m., join us for mm. our first yeah, that'll be good. plug um, with Rob Flux. And if there, are any, if there are any developers there, like I said, I would love to be able to, to um, join you on your, your journey if you're, you're happy for us to share what it is mm. that you're, awesome. you've done in your awesome. projects. I said it's to be able to to let everyone else in, in the community, so up and rising, so developers see what's possible, mm. the challenges, the, the real life, you know, things that are happening in, in, in your mm. space um, to be able to share what it is, the great things that you've done, like I said, the trials and tribulations mm. as mm. well. So um, if you'd like to be on, on, on this new segment, please reach out to me, PM me, um, and I'd love to... Uh, Love to have you guys on board. So that's a wonderful initiative, Cheryl. I congratulate you, and, a, and a, I applaud end. you for doing that. I'm I'm looking forward. To it. Unfortunately, I won't be able to see it live tomorrow, but I no. certainly will be tuning in a bit later on uh, in the evening. But I think it's a wonderful initiative for people to yeah, cool. showcase, um, perhaps you know how they started, uh, what they did, uh, some of the obstacles yeah. that they've had to overcome, perhaps continue to overcome, uh, what they love about yeah. it, what they don't love about it, uh, all those types of things. I think it's a really nice, uh, you know, to get some insights into uh, you know, what makes yeah. uh, people successful in developing so that those uh, of us who are aspiring to do that can start to understand a bit more of the blueprint. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait. I'm really looking forward Good. to it as Good. well. Um, <laughs> it seems like my, that, that might be the only time my husband gets to see me now. He'll just have to look at me online. Well, he'll have to ask a question. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll have to, he'll, he'll he have to ask have a to question. Ask That's it. it. That's, that's it, right. Exactly. Dar Dar Just all you have to do it. is to pipe yeah. up. Darling, where, where do I, I find the, the such and such? That's it. So that'll start to come through. Uh, hey? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Instead of just watching corn. <laughs> That's it. Very good. Awesome. All thank right, you. Johnny. I better let you go. Thank you very much for everyone Bye. tuning in and have a fantastic evening. Absolutely. See you, Bye. Cheryl. Bye. Bye.